A lot of people associate the seediness of Nana with crime. What do you think the biggest dangers would be facing foreigners coming out partying here? This is the first place where I've shot a video and I've felt like I'm being watched all the time and I probably am. Getting a taxi to switch on the meter around here is not so straightforward. If you pick a fight with one of the bouncers, I don't care, you're gonna go out on your, on your back. Definitely not the only cockfighting going on here in Sukhumvit Soy 4. How safe is Bangkok? Well, I'm gonna visit two parts of the city. The first area is Din Deng, a place I saw in a video back in 2019. The other area is a very popular place in Bangkok where foreigners live, work and play. It's called Nana. According to Wikipedia, this is the most polluted and noisiest part of Bangkok. And I thought on Nut was pretty bad. During the anti-government protests last year, there was quite a lot of unrest in this area that continued long after the protests had wound down in other parts of Bangkok. And I remember there were heavy police presence on this street all the way to Victory Monument. And there was always skirmishes and bits of trouble here and there. And this police box, as you can see, didn't fare very well at all. Apart from the traffic, of course, Bangkok is pretty much high up on the list of safe cities in Asia to visit. I remember reading a thread on Reddit last year. A guy was claiming that Din Deng was in fact the worst place for street crime and safety in Bangkok. I asked him a question directly. I said, why is Din Deng the most dangerous place in Bangkok? His answer was, just walk around Din Deng flats and you'll see. In the 1950s, the National Housing Authority did a lot of slum clearing in Din Deng, and they had a brand new social housing project called Din Deng Flats. It was completed in 1963. It was based on the British project of clearing slum neighborhoods and rundown areas and replacing them with blocks of flats that had indoor toilets. When I first walked past the guys playing basketball, I got really paranoid because they were staring at me. But it was probably because I was carrying a camera on a tripod and I was nervously glancing at them. And then when I went past the other guys playing to crawl, they stared at me as well. So I thought to myself, just talk to them, tell them why you're here and ask them if you can film them. And they were absolutely fine about it. When I turned into the main street, I breathed a bit of a sigh of relief because it wasn't the ghetto I'd seen in the video a few years before. The person who made that video had obviously wanted to portray it as a ghetto and he had shown broken windows, doors hanging off, piles of garbage, a few stray dogs, a burnt out shell of a car and people like to speculate on what they see. Anyway, I noticed that there was quite a few decent cars parked. The people were as friendly as Thais are when you walk through their neighborhood and give a positive smile. And there was no negative feeling at all. One common question I get in emails and messages is how safe is Bangkok for foreigners on a night out? Well, that's a tough question to answer. Different areas, different risks. Anyway, it's Saturday, I've come to Nana and I thought this would be the ideal place to do a risk assessment. Well, you're all familiar with Sukhumvit Soy 4, but the other end of that street used to have a dark, unwelcoming past. 
now there's a bit of revitalization going on. Back in the day, there was absolutely no reason to venture this far down Soy 4. You came to the gates to the old Thai tobacco monopoly and that was it. It was a pretty unwelcoming, dark and eerie place at night. Anyway, now behind those gates is a project that's going to change the local environment forever. Well, this is going to be Bangkok's brand new urban jungle, the Forest Park. Part of it is actually open at the far end, but this is going to be one of the main entrances at the end of Soy 4. They've only just planted all the trees and the vines, so I'd give it a couple of decades if you really want to enjoy a proper jungle experience. But then again, Bangkok is supposed to be sinking, so it may well just be a swamp by then. Definitely not the only cockfighting going on here in Sukhumvit Soy 4. About halfway up Soy 4 you come to Soy 6. Now this is a street that didn't exactly have a glittering past, but more recently it's been built up into an area that's going to be very popular with bars and restaurants all the way to Soy 8. Soy 6 is undergoing a bit of a revitalization and Sean, what can you tell us about that? Because this used to be a place where you really didn't want to be wandering around at night. It was dark, there was no street lights, there was corners and alleyways you definitely didn't want to stumble into after a few drinks. So what's happening around here now? I think the change is really um, before you would think Soy 6 was the end of Soy 4 and nobody wanted to go down here because it was dark, um, the bars weren't so inviting and with Soy 8 I think now that that's come up since COVID this is the pass through so we have very heavy foot traffic coming up and through people who live and work here come back and forth so everything here is brand new and one of them is still being finished uh, but instead of Coming to one bar down here before, you now have about five or six options down here. The street's well lit up and the hotels have all been renovated or are being renovated. And I think the street's going through a great change. So when do you think this will be up and running? Will it be in time for this supposed May the 1st dropping of all uh, restrictions? I would say for sure. If they do drop the restrictions with notice, then I think uh, the work will pick up next door, which is the last bar Bangkok thing is going to open again. I think they would probably get on it a little bit quicker. And I think we all want to be open at the same time. So I think, you know, I think it's going to come. A lot of people associate the seediness of Nana with crime, but pickpocketing has been a problem, and still is, I would say. Over-friendly women and ladyboys coming up to hug guys, and before the guys know it, they've lost their gold chain, their phone, their wallet, and it's too late. They can't get it back. They can go and report it to the police, and then usually it doesn't get solved. But there is a precaution I can recommend for that, and that is don't hug over-friendly strangers. What are the biggest risks facing foreign tourists in a place like Nana? I've never felt there's a, a significant threat of any violent sort of crime. Um, I would say I'm always a little bit wary of the, the pickpockets 
not to have experienced this directly, but sometimes you see some slightly dubious looking people and you think, okay, I'll just keep holding my wallet and my phone as I walk past these. But, and sometimes it's ha it hasn't happened on this trip, but in before you've had lady boys or I like, grab your arm, it's like, oh, come with me sort of thing. And I've always thought, okay, keep your hand on your wallet at this point and keep moving. But that's, that's not happened on this trip. And, and generally speaking, it feels a, a reasonably safe area, as long as you're not, I guess if you were drunk and being a fool and you got your, your phone sticking out of your back pocket, that, that wouldn't be a good idea. But I think if you're reasonably sensible and reasonably streetwise, you should be all right, is, is yeah. the impression I get. Bangkok, pretty safe city, but um, if you get like uh, really intoxicated or you take drugs or something, I guess uh, you hang out with the wrong people, you, like, you can find trouble, I think. I think yeah. you can find trouble, but if you're like staying out of trouble, if you know, you won't have any problems, I don't think. What about this area, Nana? Do you feel safe walking around here late at night? What is the biggest danger, would you think, in an area like this? Yeah, um, I think in, in Nana, like, basically, maybe really late at night, if you're, like, really intoxicated, like, um, people might try to, like, take advantage of you, you know, especially maybe um, some of the, the girls in the, the industry, you know, they might try to like separate you from your money but um, I don't you won't get like you know beaten or robbed or anything I mean that, that's very rare the police don't want people getting like beaten up down here so yeah. I think you're probably okay generally unlike cities such as New York and London where it's common to hear about street robberies or muggings at knife point it's a pretty rare occurrence in Bangkok Anyway, one crime that does get in the news from time to time is that of tourists and foreigners getting drugged and robbed by women they've either met on the street or picked up in bars and pubs. They take them back to their hotel room, enjoy a drink, and then wake up hours later dazed and confused with lots of their stuff missing and the girl long gone. I put it out on social media asking for advice as to how this could be prevented, and I got a few interesting answers. That is Soy 9. Definitely not a street you want to stumble down after a few drinks. It's unofficially known as Soy Hong Nam or Soy Toilet because that's what it smells like. It's where the market traders, motorbike taxi guys, anyone working the street, the beggars, that is where they take a piss. It does lead to Soy 7-1, but it's definitely not a shortcut. One annoyance you get up and down Sukhumvit Road, day and night actually, is tuk-tuk drivers asking you if you want a sexy lady and they will usually show you a piece of paper with pictures of women on it. Now I don't know where they will take you and what will happen, I'm assuming it's some kind of clip joint, but if you know anyone who's taken them up on their offer and gone with them in their tuk-tuk to wherever it is they take you, please leave a comment and let us know what the experience was like. Well, I was just walking around in Nana and I've bumped into Bill from Unseen Thailand in Chiang Mai channel. You may be familiar with him. I'm a fan of the channel. How you doing, Bill? Great. How you doing, man? It's funny just walking around and running into you just on the side of the street. I know. I've had a funny feeling I would bump into you yeah, for I'm some reason. Yeah, everywhere. Because you did mention it. Yeah. The theme of this video is how safe are foreigners in Bangkok generally? Well, for me, I'm an ex-cop. I was a detective for 23 years. And I can, I'll walk anywhere here in, in Bangkok. And it's been that way for since I've been coming here in 2004. I've never felt threatened. I've, I've never, you know, there's never been an area that I, I wouldn't walk into. I've walked into some of the, the worst areas, you know, and, and everybody's been 
waving at you, saying hi, and, and real friendly. The people that get in trouble up here are the people that don't use their heads. You know, they, they get a little bit too much to drink and they may get run in their mouth a little bit and then they get into trouble. But if you're just coming here to have a good time and, and walk around and see, see the place or, you know, have a good time, it's a wonderful place to do. And these people are very friendly. What you have to watch here is the traffic and crossing the streets and get, getting from point A to point B because everything here is backwards compared to what Westerners are used to. The traffic comes from the other direction. The cars are coming at you from a different direction, and you're used to looking in the other direction. And uh, that's that's the main danger, danger here, is getting your ass run over. What do you think the biggest dangers would be facing foreigners coming out partying here? The dangers here in Nana would be getting too drunk or just be, being silly and stupid. The worst thing you could ever do is pick a fight with somebody in here. You will not go home. I don't care how big you are, how bad you think you are, if you pick a fight with somebody in here, a Thai person or, or one of the bouncers, I don't care. You're going to go out on your on your back. Uh, it's just it's a proven fact. Uh, that's that's the only thing. Just keep your head about yourself and, and you know be aware of your surroundings. Don't you know don't don't come out here wearing a lot of gold and and, uh, and things like that. Just just be careful. How have you found walking around Bangkok? I know you like to walk around early hours in the morning. Hours in the morning, late at night, no problem at all. I'll walk anywhere here. Have you had any experience venturing into parts of the city where foreigners don't normally go? Here in Bangkok, yes. Actually, yesterday, Charlie Hubbard and I uh, did a walk up on the end towards the, the Elephant Museum. And we got back in an area that uh, they were, you know, people were looking at us smiling. They hadn't seen foreigners in a long time. And we we're welcomed. I mean, uh, you know, a couple dogs came out and chased me, and the people came out and sh chewed the dogs away. But uh, and, and one particular incident, we were walking by a house, and the woman just walks out. She's got no top on. Just casually walks out with her food and puts the puts the food down on the plate. Looks up, doesn't pay any attention to us, and that's just a way of life for them. So we were back in an area that people just don't go, and, and it's, you know, we felt like we were we were stepping back in time. Uh, it was a, it was a village back in in among the uh, the Klongs up by the the, the river, and uh, you know we were welcome. We didn't feel any danger. Didn't you know people were talking to us. We went to the temple and they were waving at us and saying hello and helped us get out. And, you know, I've walked in a lot of neighborhoods up here and never had any problems. Bill, I've got to say thanks for your time, okay, man. Hey, it's no problem. Nice wonderful to bumping into Bill, unseen Thailand in Chiang Mai. We'll. Uh, catch up with you soon. All right, buddy, and, you uh, take care. Absolute pleasure. Have a safe Brilliant. Care. Getting a taxi to switch on the meter around here is not so straightforward, especially after a few drinks and you just want to get home. It's worth walking a couple of hundred meters up towards Soy 1 or Soy 2 if you're on that side and getting a taxi off the street. I have a rule, while well, I only hail taxis that look new. I think all bar related activities will soon stop on Soy 7, particularly when this brand new development finally opens. It's going to make that bar area look very out of place. Back in the day, this area here at the entrance to Sukhumvit 3.1 was a hive of activity. It was absolutely buzzing with people coming and going. There were great restaurants to choose from in the Arab Quarter. Now it is clearly a shadow of its former self. What I'm trying to say is this area needs a bit of TLC. So if you do fancy some fabulous Arabic food, there are a few places open. And one place in particular does a very fine naan bread.
being safe in Nana is not just about wearing a condom or washing your hands with alcohol every five minutes. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. If you want to support me and support the channel, you can buy me a coffee or join the channel and become a member. That just leaves me to say thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon.